Hello mga kamags! Welcome back to our channel. This is Teacher C and for today's video, we're going to discuss about the kinds of quantitative research. So for our lesson for this morning, you'll be able to discuss the kinds of the quantitative research. So what are the kinds of quantitative research design? So we have here an example is we have the experimental research design. So this allows the researchers to control the situation in doing so, it allows the researchers to answer the questions, what causes something occur? So it means that this kind of research also allows the researchers to identify the cause and effect relationship between variables and to distinguish placebo effects of the treatment effects. So we have here an example for an experimental research design is the pre-experimental research design. It is a type of research applied to experimental design that with least internal validity. One type of the pre-experimental research design is the sample group pre-test post-test design. So measure the group two times before and after the interve intervention. So we have here an example of your pre-experimental design is we have the case study design and a one group pre-test uh, post-test design. The next one is we have the quasi-experimental design. In this design, the researcher can collect more data either by scheduling more observation or finding more existing measures. So quasi-experimental design involves selecting groups upon which variable is tested without any random pre-selection process. If the pre-experimental research design is just for a one design pre-test post-test, the true, uh, the quasi-experimental design is for um, two or more groups involved. So example of this is we have the equivalent time sample design, the separate sample pre-test post-test design, and the regression discontinuity analysis. For the true experimental design, it controls, it controls for both time-related and group-related re treats. So two features mark true experiments, two or more differently treated groups. So a random assignment to this group. So these features require the researchers to have control over the experiment treatment and the power to place subject in a group. So specifically in STEM students, they are using the experimental research design or either this is a, a pre-experimental design, the quasi-experimental design, and the true experimental design. So let's have the non-experimental design. So non-experimental design, this kind of design, the researcher observed the phenomena as they occur naturally and no external variables are introduced. In this research design, the variables are not deliberately manipulated nor is the setting controlled. The researchers collect the data without making changes or introducing treatment. One of the examples of this is we have the descriptive research design. So uh, this design is the main purpose is to observe, describe, and document aspects of the situation as it naturally occurs and sometimes to serve as a starting point for hypothesis generation or theory development. So one of the examples of the descriptive research design is the survey. Or we have it is used to uh, gather information from groups of people by using, selecting, and studying sample chosen from the population. So this is useful when the objective of the study is to see general pictures of the population under investigation in the terms of social and economic characteristics. Also in options or opinions rather, and their knowledge about the behavior towards a certain phenomena. In this example, you can use a survey questionnaire or an electronic questionnaire which made from the Google Forms. So next is we have the correlational. So uh, it is conducted by the researchers whose aim would be to find out the direction, association, or the relationship between the different variables or groups of the respondents under the study. If you really want to know what are the relationship between the two variables, you can use this research design. The next one is we have the ex post facto or causal comparative. 
this kind of research derives conclusion from observation and manifestation that already occurred in the past and now compared to some dependent variables. So it is also discussed why and how a phenomenon occurs. So most of the ABM students or business courses use this kind of research design to study the economic growth, finances, and other business related. Next is we have the comparative. It involves comparing and contrasting two or more samples of the study subjects or one or more variables, often at a single point in time. So specifically, this design is used to compare two distinct groups on the basis of selected attributes such as the knowledge level, perception, and attitude, or physical and psychological symptoms. And lastly, we have the normative. It describes the norm level of the characteristics for a given behavior. So for example, if you are conducting a research on the study habits of the high school students, you are to use the range of scores to describe the level of their study habit. The same true, it is when you want to describe their academic performance. So hope you have learned a lot from this topic and see you in the next episode. Thank you.